What's happening YouTube? My name is Alex and welcome to a new review. For today I have a mini PC running Windows 10 and a TV box running Android 5.1 and all that in this black box here. So of course we have a device with dual boot. For specs we have an Intel Atom X5 CPU which is a decent uh, processor. We have 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of internal storage that's divided between Android and Windows and dual band Wi-Fi. This is called a Chewy High Box and it costs around $130. So for the price it's not that expensive considering the specs but um, you could get a TV box that's much cheaper. So it really depends if you need Windows. Starting with a very quick unboxing. So this device comes in a rather big box. It's a plain box. On the front we see the brand name and on one side we are going to see some specifications about the device. Inside the box you're gonna find a mini PC of course, you're also gonna find an HDMI cable, the power adapter and we've seen this power adapter in the past. You're also gonna find a little booklet that's not gonna give you any information and lastly an air mouse and you can use that air mouse for either Windows or Android. And moving to the mini PC itself, so this is called a Highbox Hero. It is made out of plastic entirely and we don't get that premium feeling that we get to the a lot of mini PCs from China. So starting on the front, here you're gonna find a slot for a TF card, two USB ports and the power button. And since we have that SD card slot on the front of the device, you could technically install an SD card, but you're only gonna be able to install that um, as internal storage for Windows. And since we are talking about storage on the Android side, we only get about 10 gigs um, of storage and the rest is being used by the Windows side. And of course I did some speed tests um, on the Android side and uh, on the Windows side and the speeds that we got were um, rather decent for a device this cheap. On the other side of the mini PC you're gonna find the reset button, uh, you're also gonna find a 3.5mm audio jack and the network adapter port and since we are talking about the network adapter port um, this TV box also supports dual band um, Wi-Fi if we can call it a TV box. So if you're using Android, you're actually going to be able to access the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi networks and the speeds that I got um, on those are appropriate. They're better on the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi network uh, and uh, rather okay for the 2.4 but nothing special. And uh, if you use Windows, uh, you're only going to be able to access the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. So the 5 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi networks uh, don't show up in there. However, the speeds uh, over the network adapter port are rather good for both Windows and Android. And continuing with the device, we also have a HDMI output, a USB 3 port and the power adapter port. Since this has an Intel processor, I believe that it was intended to be used more on the Windows side than the Android side. I tried DTS sound and Dolby Digital sound for both Windows and Android uh, with Kodi and it does seem to work very very good so I haven't had any issues with DTS and Dolby Digital sound. As for the benchmark results, uh, I did a couple of tests uh, on the Android side and a test on the Windows side. So on the Antutu benchmark um, on the Android side we got a very good score and this is probably one of the highest scores uh, that I've seen for a TV box. We also get a decent score for the Geekbench 4 and on the Windows side I did a test that I did uh, on both the K8 mini PC that I tried some time ago and uh, on that Voyo V1 uh, mini PC that uh, I'm using now. So we got a score of about 617 uh, for this uh, particular device and uh, just so you have a point of reference uh, on the K8 mini PC we got a score of about 500 and on the Voyo V1 we get a score of about 900. So this is somewhere um, in the middle so decent uh, for that particular uh, CPU. Now that you've seen how this looks and you have a better idea about the Wi-Fi performance and um, the scores for different uh, benchmark tests, uh, I'm actually going to plug this in and I'm going to start recording the screen. Um, I'll show you the Android side and the Windows side uh, shortly because we don't want to make this video that long. And I'm also going to show you how uh, some uh, video files work um, on the Android side and uh, some on the Windows side. Of course I'm not gonna try the same files on both sides because the video would be just uh, way too long. So I'm gonna start with the Android side and this is how the launcher for the Android side looks like. So it looks like stock Android basically and it doesn't come uh, pre-installed with uh, pretty much any apps. All we get is the Play Store and a couple of uh, other ones and the rest I kind of installed myself. And code you can just install from the Play Store. And since uh, we are here, let's go to settings uh, quickly and uh, here uh, these are the settings that we get. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find um, 
a place uh, or some settings so I can actually zoom in or zoom out the screen. So no matter what I've done, uh, I wasn't able to do that. And uh, what happens when you connect this to a regular uh, TV, the screen seems to be a bit bigger than the TV. This gets corrected by itself uh, whenever you plug this into a computer monitor. But on a regular TV, I cannot see the entire screen uh, for some reason. And there is no, uh, no way of actually adjusting that um, anywhere. So that is the downside to the Android uh, part. Um, other than that, we have the Intel Smart Video here, which I haven't actually found uh, to make any difference uh, whenever you are uh, watching videos. Of course, we have uh, Bluetooth here, and uh, if we go to About Device here, we can see the model uh, name basically, which is uh, Hibox Hero, the Android version is 5.1, and this is the latest uh, security patch. So basically, this is all we get uh, for the settings app on the Android side. And as I said before, um, you can connect to the 2.4 and the 5 GHz uh, Wi-Fi networks um, on the Android side. Unfortunately, we don't get root access from the factory, and this is the digital rights management um, information that we get. For our next quick test, um, I opened the Kodi. This is Kodi 16.1 that I installed from the Play Store. So uh, let's go to System here and System Info. I'm just going to show you what um, information we get here. So uh, we have a whole bunch of uh, free RAM because uh, this uh, device has 4 gigs of RAM, so a whole bunch of uh, RAM available. And uh, since this uh, it's installed right from the Play Store, of course, we are not going to have any add-ons, but the uh, add-ons are very easy to actually install. So I have my uh, USB stick uh, with a whole bunch of files on it. Uh, we'll try some of them and see how uh, well they do. I expect that the 4K files aren't going to do great because uh, this CPU, even though it's uh, more powerful than uh, the most uh, CPUs that we find in TV boxes, it's not really optimized uh, for Android. So let's start with this one. And uh, I think I tried this one already and uh, it does work uh, pretty good. So uh, I'm just going to let it play for a quick second. And as you can probably tell, uh, it does uh, seem to do fairly good. So we'll stop that one, we'll uh, go to this one here, and of course this one uh, also does good. And let's try those 4K files out of curiosity basically. And uh, as I was expecting, uh, they're not, uh, the first one at least is not going to work. So let's try the next one. And I don't think that this one uh, will actually work either. Let's move to the next file. So a 720p file, uh, of course, uh, will work much better. But um, definitely this CPU, it's not optimized uh, for Android and um, that's why we can't actually watch those 4K files. And this one will also work. Basically every single file that uh, we'll try, uh, it's gonna work fine except for those um, 4K files. But I'm very curious to see this one here. Let's see if this one actually starts up. So no, this one uh, will not start up um, either. This is a 4K file at 24 frames per second. Let's see what happens. Oh, this one actually plays. So if you have like um, some 4K files that uh, you film with your phone, uh, most likely those uh, will work. So that's uh, how uh, Kodi works and uh, how video files work on this. And keep in mind that um, Dolby Digital and DTS also work uh, with Kodi on the Android side of this device. And for our last uh, test on the Android side, um, I have Real Racing 3 uh, playing and I'm using a Bluetooth uh, controller and uh, I wasn't expecting that the game would uh, do this good actually. I thought that uh, it would do much, uh, much worse. Uh, but it seems that uh, it does uh, work fairly good. So I'm just gonna play for a couple of seconds. And then we'll switch to the Windows side. I'm gonna show you a couple of things. Um, on the Windows side as well. But uh, overall for uh, Android, uh, using this uh, as an Android TV box just to, so you can have access to the Play Store basically and to that 5 GHz uh, Wi-Fi network, uh, I think that uh, this uh, works very very good. Alright, so uh, next we'll switch to Windows and we'll see how well uh, that one does. And also switching to Windows, it's uh, very easy. All you have to do is uh, swipe down from the top and then uh, just press Switch OS and uh, now it will uh, switch to Windows.
Alright, so now I'm on the Windows side and of course this looks like any device with the Windows 10 and uh, we can even get updates uh, on this. So let me go here to start and the uh, settings. At system here, I'm just going to show you a couple of uh, things. So if we go to about, uh, we can see that um, this is using Windows uh, 10 Home. This is the CPU that we have and the 4 gigs um, of RAM. If I go to storage here, we're going to see how much space uh, we have available. This is a USB stick that um, I have connected. But uh, basically, you have about 28 gigs um, available um, of storage. So um, the rest is being taken by the operating system and the Android. So uh, if we go back here um, and uh, update and security, and we go to activation, we can see that uh, this is... Uh, an activated um, copy of Windows, so that's a good thing. And uh, it's been downloading uh, updates uh, ever since I uh, got the box uh, on. So um, you're definitely going to get updates for Windows. You also have access to the Windows Store, like on any other uh, Windows 10 device. So you can basically install anything uh, that you want from here. You can buy apps if you want. Uh, so just like uh, on any Windows uh, machine. And um, yes, I did uh, play a couple of uh, games from here and uh, they do seem uh, to work fine as well. Aside from that, I'm going to show you the Geekbench 4 results. Uh, I'm going to install Geekbench 4 and I'll show you the results for Windows as well. So this is the score that we get on the Geekbench 4 for Windows. And this is very similar to the score that uh, we got on the Android side uh, of this. So I'm going to scroll uh, down. Okay, so here we can see the CPU and uh, some other information about uh, this test. Here at performance we can see how uh, the CPU is working and uh, of course if I start uh, opening more of this, so let's open some more uh, Windows uh, Explorer things, uh, we'll see the CPU working much, uh, much harder. So. Uh, Currently it's at 1.7 GHz, uh, here at uh, memory basically this is the RAM, this is the speed that uh, we have for the RAM and available at this time we have about uh, 2 gigs. So um, again um, this is for the internal uh, memory and the Wi-Fi uh, as well. I have the browser open and YouTube, um, so I'm going to show you how uh, this video plays at 1080p for example. So 1080p every video is going to play smooth and uh, as you can probably tell uh, it does go uh, very smooth. But if I change the resolution to 2K or 4K it doesn't go uh, that smooth anymore. So let's change to the maximum resolution available. So you're going to see that it doesn't uh, go that smooth anymore. So as you can probably tell uh, it's not totally totally smooth. Alright, so we closed on that. But uh, that's how uh, YouTube will work. So very, very decent uh, for a CPU like this. I've also installed Kodi on the Windows side. I just wanted to see if those 4K files um, are uh, working. And uh, the first one at 59 frames per second, it actually starts up but uh, doesn't go that smooth. So let me just uh, click on it. So it's going to take a second or so, but uh, it will eventually start up. But as I said, uh, it doesn't go smooth at all, and um, you can probably see it uh, right now. But uh, the other one at uh, 50 frames per second does uh, a bit better. So let me start this one. And it does go in slow motion, but uh, at least uh, it works, because on the Android side, uh, these files weren't working at all. So as you can probably tell, uh, it uh, kind of works. Not, not really, but... Um, just so you have an idea um, how those two 4K files uh, work. Other than that, uh, Kodi works very good and you can even get DTS and uh, Dolby Digital uh, sound. So overall, uh, I think that uh, the Windows side and the Android side, uh, they both work uh, very, very good uh, considering the price of this box. So for the price, this gives you the best of both worlds. But if you are uh, more into Android TV boxes, you should probably get an Android TV box. Um, but if you are uh, more into Windows devices and um, you want to access that Play Store every now and then, this could be a good option. However, if you just uh, use Windows, uh, maybe you should uh, go and get yourself uh, a mini PC that has uh, only Windows on it. Because this way you don't lose uh, that internal storage uh, for the Android side. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.